Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Olivia. I'm also known as the carnivore ballerina and in today's video I spoke with Spencer. Spencer is an epileptic and used to have these very severe seizures as I've come to learn a bit more through this interview what epilepsy is. He was even in the process of filing for disability papers so not being able to drive, have even a part-time job so basically being disabled for life with those papers. And he was able to change his life around um, because of a chiropractor who, of course, helped him with chiropractic adjustments as well as diet and lifestyle. And his life has completely changed, which is pretty impressive, I must say. Uh, I don't know much about neurological disorders and changing with diet and just lifestyle and even using a chiropractor for that. So this was very interesting for me and kind of eye-opening. So I have a lot more respect for chiropractors. Not that I didn't. I do love my chiropractor. Um, so yeah, I found it fairly interesting and inspiring, and if you do have a similar situation or just looking for a success story to inspire you as well, this is a great one, and if you even want to work with Spencer, he's currently studying to be a chiropractor, you can find his information down below, and he'll also give it at the end of the um, interview. So yeah. So hi, Spencer. It's really nice to meet you. I've um, followed a bit of your journey for some time now, and I'm really excited to talk with you and learn more about you. Hello, nice to finally meet you. Um, we've been kind of talking a little bit, but it's great to be kind of face to face. Uh, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, no, thank you for coming on. Um, so in kind of a brief summary, we'll obviously get into more detail. Um, what's your whole history, story and background and what it is that you do now? Sure. Um, so right now I'm a chiropractic student uh, at a very young age when I was 12 and 25 now. I was diagnosed with epilepsy, uh, which kind of started my whole health, I guess you could say, journey. And uh, over the years, I've kind of figured out the ins and outs of what works with my body naturally, as opposed to um, the normal way of doing it with the medication and everything like that. So um, fast forward into college, just dealing with the different issues with epilepsy, uh, I couldn't really figure out what was going on. And... Um, I swam at a division one level, but unfortunately, my freshman year after finals, I had a seizure in the pool and I technically did drown. I was under the water for about a minute. Um, and after that, I, I kind of promised myself to, you know, take this more seriously than I had been in the past. So after that, I got a second opinion. I was in Cleveland at the time. I went to the Cleveland Clinic for years. They were pushing kind of, you know, medication after medication, and then they recommended surgery. I didn't really feel comfortable. So I went to the Mayo Clinic to get a second opinion, and they recommended the same thing. But after I've been dealing with so many different things with it, sleeping through the first um, few classes of the day, I decided to have that surgery. And after surgery, uh, the laser ablation, where they removed the majority of my insula, of my brain, um, things got a lot worse. Um, so then I went to an alternative medicine doc as a final resort, because I had so many gut issues. Uh, my brain, obviously seizures were really, really bad at the time. Um, and he was an alternative medicine doc as well as a chiropractor. And he kind of showed me the ins and outs on how to naturally, um, I guess, work with your body as opposed to against it by adding in just chemicals, right? Because it's never a chemical imbalance, technically. It's just about what you're feeding your body, both um, thoughts, traumas, and toxins. So that kind of got me to where I'm at today. Um, I'm just very blessed to everything that's happened to me because I hope to one day be able to help people, mainly through nutrition as well as chiropractic. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot there to unpack. So it's been very recent then that you've actually had the surgeries and dealing with all this and healing from it. Yeah, I think it's been about uh, almost four years now. So sort of recent. Um, but at the time, I was getting ready with my family to sign the disability forms. I was not planning on having a full time job. And the doctor quite literally saved my life. So from there on, I knew I had to share this with other individuals, um, not even just people with epilepsy, but across the board, no matter what you're dealing with, 
there's likely something you can do naturally to maybe not cure it, but at least help it. Right, yeah. I, wow, yeah. Um, so when you first had the surgeries, you were what, like 21 years old, 22? I believe it was 22. So don't quote me on that, but it was around that time. I was a, a junior in college. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so how did it get worse after the surgeries? Mm. Um, well, there, I, I'm not going to lie. There was a time where I was better afterwards, but it was very brief. Um, my gut just went crazy, right? Because of all the antibiotics, all the steroids, I gained a lot of weight and my gut was just so messed up. Uh, I had to pretty much restart. I was bloating after every time I was eating. I couldn't get off the couch. I was sore throughout the day, my neck, my back, all these different things were going wrong because the body works as a whole, right? It's not just one thing, but everything plays a role. And I think it was just the addition of all those different medications and drugs and just like, not just not doing the right things for my body, working against it. Essentially. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That would do it. And the, the medications you were on, that was after the surgery or were you on like some other, I guess, like neurological mm -hmm. medications beforehand to help? Throughout my entire life, I was on different medications and yeah, nothing was working. But then afterwards is when they really started to ramp it up, try numerous amount of different things just to try to get this under control. And yeah, that's, that's when it went really bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you said you were diagnosed with epilepsy around age 12. So then before that, and then I guess after, what was that kind of like, I don't know too much about epilepsy. It's just like you have these random seizures and you can't really do much about them. Yeah. So they vary person to person. Mine happen mostly at night. Um, I don't fall on the ground and start seizing. Like I think most people picture epilepsy. Mine's more of sleepwalking is what they originally thought. Um, but I'll kind of clench my teeth really hard. I'll foam at the mouth. Um, and I just have no control over my body, which, which is why it's kind of dangerous for me. I, I have it very lucky. Um, and I'm happy that, you know, they're not too severe, but they do play a severe role. I'm not able to drive um, growing up. Socially, it was a little hard. I just wanted to stay out of a lot of different situations so that an issue didn't arise. Yeah. Wow. So sleepwalking. So let's say if a kid who's young is sleepwalking, that could potentially be diagnosed later on as some form, not just typical sleepwalking, but like sleepwalking right. as well as like no control over the body could eventually be diagnosed as epilepsy. Potentially. Yes. I think there's just so many different things that are going on with the body that, I mean, there's just so many diagnoses that, that they could have, but they're blanket terms. Um, I think that the, the person knows more at the end of the day, and I know they can't diagnose themselves, but they know exactly what's going on with themselves. Right. Yeah. So what prompted your parents to get a diagnosis? Obviously you had your mouth is foaming and you had all these other things, but like, what was the push, I guess, or was it getting worse or something like that? It was starting to affect my swimming. Um, well, okay. just, just day-to-day -day life. I had one, I should say at school first where I was in the bathroom and I came out, I had no knowledge of it, obviously, but I was walking around the halls with, um, my pants unbuttoned and then it had one in the pool. I had one in the pool, which I mean, that's not safe to begin with. So those were the two things that is why we went to the physician, to my physician and stuff. Right, yeah. So during like a seizure or episode, you just completely black out and you don't have like any memory of it then? Normally, yes. Sometimes I'll have glimpses afterwards, but I, yeah, I have no control. A lot of it seems like it's a sympathetic effect. So I'll run to the bathroom during that time of when I'm foaming at the mouth it's almost like I'm scared, but I mean, I don't remember any of it. That's kind of scary to just like have a blank memory of what could have possibly happened. Sure. Yeah. But I, yeah. I, I'm very blessed. You know, it could be a lot worse than it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So then you had two surgeries. Did you have initially one surgery? And then because it wasn't, let's say like fully successful, you had a second one or what mm -hmm. was that? 
So the first one was actually, it's called a SEEG, uh, similar to an EEG where they hook up electrodes. But this one was more invasive where I think they had around 30 electrodes in my head. And I was in the hospital for a week and a day, I want to say. And I couldn't move. I had to stay in bed just because of all those electrodes in my head. Um, I still got some scarring. I'm sure you can't see it, but they were in there for a while. And that was just to kind of monitor where exactly it was coming from. Unfortunately, they admitted that they couldn't figure out where exactly, but they thought they had an idea, which is why they encouraged me to have that second surgery, which was considered the laser ablation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're looking for like some, I guess, neurological disorder or like some something in your brain that would be causing that. Yes, an overreaction, right? Nope. So, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. So then the surgery itself is to remove, I guess, whatever is causing the overreaction. Yes, yeah, it was to just eliminate it completely, uh, which in hindsight probably wasn't the best idea, but I wanted a resolution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then what's the recovery process for that? Because it is, a, it's your brain. So is there like some time or period after the surgery where you just feel kind of brain dead or something? What, yeah. For lack yeah. Of a I, I, yeah, exactly. I was um, pretty beat up for the first, I want to say year after first six months, I wasn't able to work out at all. They told me none of that, right. Just stay home. Um, take all these medications, just rest, right? Just, it takes your body a little bit to get back into shape, especially when you remove a portion of it. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, because I guess like your brain activity or how you're thinking would um, affect your muscles, like how you're training. So then you just kind of have to let that rest and then having that rest and you have to let your whole body rest. Exactly, yes. Yep. Wow. Yeah. That kind of, that's a lot of time to just be recovering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It wasn't easy, but I had a, a great support group around me, which very much helped. Yeah. That would be very important. Uh, so, okay. So after the surgeries, how did you get to a chiropractor? Cause that's like the last thing I would think of for a yeah. neurologic. <laughs> or like oh that. yeah. Yeah. Well, my sister was actually diagnosed with Lyme. I want to say two years before. So she went to an alternative medicine doc, which he was also a chiropractor. I didn't want to go to him at all. I went to the emergency room multiple times throughout the course of those next year after the surgery. Like what's going on? I had an endoscopy done, taking obviously several different medication, uh, acid reflex pills, like anything to help all this bloating and just like general pain I was having. And she kept saying, you need to go to this guy. He's got a different perspective. And I just, eventually I caved because I went to the emergency room and I was so desperate. But yeah, like the normal population, I avoided a chiropractor as long as possible. Yeah, they, they're different. They're different for sure. But that's what makes them special. Mm -hmm. And it, it really did help. Um, I remember after the first appointment, and not to get too graphic, I was going to the bathroom again. Um, I was just, I just felt so much better. I was able to move my body better. And I just had a little bit of clarity, just thinking and talking. And there were so many things that I couldn't narrow them all down. But it's truly amazing what can happen just from chiropractic. And, and people don't understand that. But I highly encourage people to look into it. Mm -hmm. I'd yeah. be happy to explain more, but you know, yeah, Soon. <laughs> clearly yeah. I'm pretty passionate about it. So, yeah. Yeah. Cause I always thought, cause I, I go to the chiropractor uh, quite often and I've gone to several for the most part, it's just like structural um, adjustments, but I do yeah. follow this one chiropractor, which I love on YouTube. I think his name is Dr. Jin Sung and he goes about yeah. on about all these different things and things that you can take. And I had no idea that had anything to do with, um, being a chiropractor. So is that part of studying to be a chiropractor or is that like an additional thing that you could do on the side that you would um, kind of. We just look at the body as a whole and there's so many different philosophies behind it, but 
the individuals who founded chiropractic looked at three main things, thoughts, traumas, and toxins. And all of those things play a, diff, a different role in the body, right? And if those things aren't aligned, issues are going to arise. But um, yeah, we just see it a little differently. Everybody has a different uh, viewpoint on it. And I won't be like too boring, but um, Gonstead is a big, big technique. And they kind of focus on one exact subluxation, meaning the spine or anything like that is unaligned, they fix that one thing because it could either be, you know, a sympathetic effect or a parasympathetic fight or flight, or you're calm and relaxed. Um, and then you have other people that look at just, you know, the cervical spine. That's all they really want to touch. You have others who think once you align the pelvis and the lower back, everything else will follow. But I mean, there's, there's a lot of us. There's a lot of different people that have different philosophies. We have people similar to physical therapists that want to strengthen all those muscles around it. There, like I said, there's an array. Yeah. Wow. I bet. Yeah. There's like a billion different nuances and you can kind of like specify in what you think would be the most effective to help people. Yes. And I think a lot of it has to do with what worked for them and then they help other people learn about it. Yeah. So then with your experience having help from a chiropractor, what did they do that helped you? Um, I would probably say the cervical adjustments really did help just with everything flowing a lot better. I think that I have a lot of, or had a lot of issues with blood flow to my brain. And obviously it's still not perfect, but it's made a major difference in just how I function my seizure frequency, um, and so many different things, so many different. Yeah, I would think so. And oh wait, so going back, you said there was three main things for a uh, chiropractic study, I guess, yeah. or like the foundation of it. Um, you said trauma was one of them. Would that be like physical trauma or would that also include like emotional trauma or yeah. things like that? Good question. It's, it's, it depends on the doc, but a lot of them think trauma and I, for one, think, you know, mental trauma and everything like that, um, depending on how spiritual you want to get. Yes, that's that's something that I believe in. Yes. And, and a bunch of us do. So then, like, if you had some form of emotional trauma that could kind of misalign you. Like you could take that trauma, let's say, and you would somehow, I guess, unconsciously move in a certain way to counterbalance somehow with your structure in your body and then that would cause a misalignment so then you would have to go and have that aligned again sure and yeah that could help yep yeah i mean like i said there's so many different ways of seeing it i think that trauma just in general if you go through something in life until you kind of accept it and look at it and other people think that you know doing different uh, adjustments does help it um, that they do play a role and then like I said kind of your thoughts go crazy you start thinking negative of yourself and those also have an effect on just how your body functions as a whole and I know this is kind of like some pseudo science pseudoscience stuff but I firsthandedly saw it after I had the surgery and all those different thoughts started coming in where I was going to be, you know, stuck for the rest of my life under my parents with uh, my disability. It was very difficult. And that was one thing that he really did help me. He helped me start to meditate um, and taught me how to do that, which meditation is a whole different realm, but it's all about accepting where you're at and just being content and just removing some of those blockages. Mm -hmm. As in like mental as well as let's say spiritual or traumatic blockages. Exactly. Yes. I hope that answered the question. I know I'm yeah. going all over the place, but yeah. No, no, that was good. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you mentioned that the chiropractor, so adjustments helped, but he also, or she uh, helped with mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> diet and with some supplements and then lifestyle changes. So I would assume yes. meditation would be some of the lifestyle changes. Yep. Yep. And there was some acupuncture. I think another major thing was the nutrition for me. He did some IV therapy, um, but the nutrition portion was the, was a pivotal, pivotal part to it. 
Yeah. So what were the, uh, like, I guess, nutritional recommendations or what were you told that would help you? Mm -hmm. Well, so the first thing was a whole foods diet, um, just eating things from nature. He started me off also with a more fat centric diet. So I was keto, ketogenic diet for a while, but I was still having a lot of, even though I was improving dramatically and I was able to function and go out and do stuff throughout the day, still having that bloating and those different things that were just, you know, making me feel like crap, even though I could function, I just did not feel great. And I, I kind of just felt it. He then moved me to a carnivore diet. And he also had me on some pills for um, natural pills, I should add supplements um, and Diflucan, which is a parasite cleanser, essentially. Um, and those, when I started going carnivores, when I felt the best I ever felt there, it was almost like that last thing that I needed that I could not figure out over the span of the year that he helped me get to that point. Um, and then once I got rid of the parasites, all that stuff fell into place. And I just, I was functioning at an extreme level that I never imagined I could possibly do. With the carnivore diet. So you felt like absolutely your best when you went full on carnivore. Was that mainly because you removed uh, vegetables or were you doing like the keto diet? Well, yeah. So what kind of keto diet were you doing? And then what did you remove that now going carnivore, uh, helped you with? So I was on a just natural keto diet. I wasn't focusing on anything specific besides the fat and eating real food. Um, you know, nothing, nothing crazy at all. It just, people go wrong with the keto diet because they think they're following keto but they're factoring in those uh, net carbs and they go crazy about that. And they're still eating the processed food. What he emphasized for me was don't eat any processed food that doesn't count. You have to have clean, natural, organic, not necessarily organic, but natural foods as well as keep that high fat content. Uh, he encouraged me to be under about 15 carbs per day. So if I, for instance, if you eat a, avocado. I mean, even though you have net carbs in there, it's still technically a decent amount of carbohydrates. You have to be very mindful of what you're putting in your body. Right. So you'd have to, then it would be just very high, uh, more so like a meat-based diet then. Essentially. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I guess it depends on how you categorize it. Um, because some people that just follow the meat-based diet, they don't want anything like, um, you know, avocados or any fruits or vegetables. So, yeah, right. Okay. So that plus supplements plus the lifestyle. So apart from, yeah, those two things, what kind of supplements were you taking apart from the parasitic cleanse? A lot of just, um, general like B12, like B vitamins, um, GABA things like glycine, that magnesium that help the brain focused on the brain, but also getting my body to be able to detox liver cleanses. I've taken a lot of different supplements to figure out what works for me, but yeah, the list goes on and on. I think a lot of it comes down to trial and error. Some things I didn't agree with some things. I just felt better the next day after I took it or even that day. And are you still taking some of these supplements or is that not really a thing anymore? Oh, I, I take supplements. I don't work with him. He actually retired, um, but I work with a muscle tester down here. She's a nutritionist. Uh, shout out to Meg. She's awesome. She, she muscle tests me to figure out what exactly is working with my body, what supplement I need at that time. And then we go from there. It's kind of like a rotation thing, only looking at the neuro neurological side of it. If my body doesn't like it, right? It's pushing it away. We don't, we don't want to take it. Right. Okay. That's cool. I used to have someone that did muscle testing for me and that was yeah really helpful. It's, um, she's testing or she's kind of like guiding you to do the muscle testing. She tests me and I don't know the exact science behind it, but basically I have my arm out. She's pushing me down and she's holding the pill. If it, if I drop, right. Then that means I either need it or I don't. And I don't exactly know which one it is. Yeah. 
There's yeah, also I, ways you can self-test too. I, she kind of explained to me and I've tried it. You, you grab the supplement, you put it to your body, you close your eyes. If you fall forward, that means you need it. If you fall back, it's a no, but you can also test the number of uh, dosage you need. So if you think one and you fall forward, that's one. You're neutral for one, then you fall forward to, for two. That means you need two. I'd have to try that out. I knew, of, yeah, there was another one where like you took your hand, I think it was like this, yes. and then you test like that, but I don't remember which way meant what. Yeah, I'm not sure either, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, no, that one, that one's cool because then you kind of know like the swaying. I, I think I may have heard about that. Anyways, yeah. yeah. Um, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I need to start using that again for like different supplements and things because that's, yeah. yeah. Which, do you take a lot of supplements? Not really. Uh, I try not to. I'm just taking uh, different minerals. So like raw minerals, which is okay. not tasty. Um, and sometimes, <laughs> or yeah, no, it's not great. Um, and yeah, organ meats. So either in okay. the capsule form or, um, yeah. or the actual thing. And that's about those, it. Those yeah. can get rough. Those can get rough too. Yeah. Organ, yeah. I can the, tolerate liver, anything else. Yeah. What, what kind of liver though? Just raw. I can do the raw liver, but then I tried like a mix of, and I, I did it wrong because I did two at once. I tried kidney and I tried, I think it was, it was either brain or heart and it was not good. I like made a burger with it. No, I don't recommend that. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe that was brain. I think heart, I've tried heart. Heart is okay, but brain just texture. Uh, uh yeah and look <laughs> looks just really unappealing yeah not good yeah anyways um oh yeah so i was gonna ask you i don't know if you know the answer to this or if there even is an answer um what is the cause for epilepsy or like, it could be any cause i mean it could be anything it could be an overreaction it could be an underreaction um but it could be anything it could be a trauma they just start happening and i think that's the difficulty behind epilepsy you just don't know. And that's why you kind of got to go through the process of trial and error, taking different medications, if that's what you're interested in, um, and trying different foods. I mean, it could just be something as simple as you smell a food and that causes you to have a seizure. Wow. Yeah. So it's, yeah, like a pretty sensitive thing. Can be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And would that be like genetic, let's say like you would inherit that or pass it down or what what is that like always a possibility my grandmother had ms uh, multiple sclerosis um i don't know if there's a connection to it but i mean it's another big neurological issue so right yeah wow okay yeah it's a lot to unpack there it's probably <laughs> yeah it would like you mentioned earlier it wouldn't be nice as a young kid going to school and having that type of health condition, because then you're kind of always aware of it and hoping that I guess you wouldn't have some form of seizure and then you wouldn't want yeah. to be doing certain things to avoid any weird situation. Right, yeah, I, I really do feel for them. It was not easy. A lot of people didn't know I had it because mine are nocturnal, um, but you know, it's never easy to have any type of thing going through high school right um i i that's kind of why i dedicated my life to doing this chiropractic as well as nutrition i really do want to help people be able to find like i said not a solution but but figure out some things to be more preventative than you know waiting too long yeah definitely so once you found the chiropractor and they mostly healed, uh, well, adjustment with adjustments as well as um, healing with nutrition and supplements and lifestyle, that were you having some forms of seizures before that still? Or was that kind of not really happening after the, uh, the surgeries? Um, well, so after surgery, I was having seizures all the time. I was having one probably once a day at wow. night normally. Yeah, but it was not not good. And then I started doing these different things and it started to really help. And I was still having them, you know, once every three days, but I mean, that's a major difference between what it was. 
And I'm not going to lie to you. I still have seizures from time to time. Um, but I mean, it's manageable now. It's much better than what it was. It's night and day, essentially. Wow. Yeah, I would think so. That would be pretty life changing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Like I said, I was getting ready to fill out those disability forms because I could not hold a full time job. There's no there's no way even a part time job was out of reach, I thought. But I mean, stuff does work when you do a more holistic approach. I don't want to sell something, you know, if anybody's watching where they, they, they're super excited to try this because they think they're going to solve their issues. Um, but it doesn't hurt to try something like this because it's non-invasive. Definitely, yeah. You just have to try out. I mean, it gets to a point where you're kind of desperate and you just need to look at what works. Maybe it's going to a chiropractor or some other alternative medicine. Like I've also had a lot of success with um, acupuncture as well. So mm -hmm. like different things yeah. like that. A hundred percent. Yeah. It can be just the smallest thing to really make a difference in somebody's life. Yeah. Wow. So we kind of, we kind of summarize that up very nicely there. So I'm going to ask you about parasites now. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> the okay. great topic. All right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. What was your experience? And uh, yeah, did you end up, well, clearly you probably ended up having parasites and what was it like before and then after that period of time? Yeah. So parasites, a lot of brain fog. And this was at a point where I was feeling much better. I was still having different issues. Like I said, the carnivore really helped, but um, I still do parasite cleanses from time to time um, because it's, it's necessary. They're literally everywhere. Um, even your dogs, you know, if they're licking your nose, they're probably getting it. Uh, it's something that is overlooked, but it was causing me a lot of brain fog and um, that bloating. My doctor actually had me on Diflucan, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, that really helped relieve a lot of that bloating that I was having and a lot of that mental brain fog I was having, which ironically lessened the amount of seizures I was having. So all of this plays a role. I couldn't narrow it down to one thing, but I definitely had parasites at the time. And now that I do routine um, detoxes, it really does help. I actually have right on my dresser over there. I take it every day, a little dropper. And then I've got a little binder that helps grab everything and then, and then try to get it out of my system. But parasites are very, very tricky. And I know you, you've been doing some stuff on your end, but that's another thing that's overlooked because they're literally everywhere. Yeah, I completely agree. You can, it's really tricky to know whether, well, okay, it isn't really tricky. You can kind of self-diagnose and kind of know whether you have them or not, but their impact mm -hmm. is just truly amazing, which is yes. why I really dislike them. Uh, yeah. And yeah, <laughs> and yeah, you definitely have to do, I now do probably, well, like on a monthly basis at the moment, I'm kind of doing on a daily basis, like parasite cleanse, just because of moving around so much. And even like the environment that you're in, you can be more, um, I guess, susceptible to them. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So absolutely. would you know, like, I don't know if you've studied that or not, um, but different ways that you could get parasites apart from your dog, which is the very obvious one. Yeah. Well, I mean, we took a lot of classes on it. Um, I don't, don't quote me on anything, but yeah, I mean, you can get them literally everywhere. We learned about the major ones. So what you would get that would drastically affect your life. Not, not the kind of things that I think we're talking about right now, where you could have it and you might not even know you have it. Um, and I think they all get kind of lumped together when they're not the major things. Um, because you just, you, they're so microscopic that you just don't know what you have. Yeah. 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 Does that I guess, answer your question at all? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it did. Yeah. I'm just thinking of, yeah, like the major ones would be like, I guess, tapeworm and hookworm and things like that, that could cause huge issues. And then the tiny little ones, like, I guess, GRDO, but that's still pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's still pretty. Yeah. 
but there's yeah. subcategories, right? The severity right. of what, how, what they do to the body is going to be different. Uh, and I, everybody has parasites. It's without a doubt. They, but they, like you said, they can literally take control of your body. They can make you angry, um, cause those digestive issues. You could have, you know, itchiness, like what, a, there's so many different, there's people I've seen that have different eye issues, like different rashes, eczema, like literally anything that you could possibly think of parasites could potentially be behind it yeah definitely agree with that my whole skin issue thing i think was parasites because when i finally cleansed everything that's when i stopped Mm. getting like actual outbreaks and Uh, then yeah i also had joint pain which i think was inflammation and anytime that i've had parasites i'd get so i would attribute that to the parasites so yeah and i think i think Honestly, a, a big indicator of it could be if you're having these weird symptoms to pay attention to what happens around the full moon. Because yeah. if you're having these different symptoms and you just feel achy one day or off, you know, look at look outside that night. Is it is it close to a full moon? Because that's a major thing for me that I totally forgot to mention. Around the full moon, I have seizures. And that's like it's to a T. I'll have a seizure and I'll say, this is weird. I haven't had one in two weeks. And then I look outside. Oh, so it was a full moon last night. So then would you, I guess, kind of connect a bit of your seizures or I get, yeah, your seizures to having parasites then? Yeah, I, I would, but like we're kind of talking about, they're hard to combat. Something interesting I was looking into recently, I mentioned earlier, my grandmother had MS. There's a surgeon that came out a few months ago and she's gotten a lot of hate recently because of the whole COVID thing. She's kind of like a natural ivermectin based doc. Um, The media does not like her very much, but she actually was talking about how MS patients she was dealing with cadavers. So the dead bodies that they would, uh, the autopsies that they would perform on them. I don't know the exact number, but it was over 10 of those bodies, 10 out of 10 or whatever number um, it was, all of them had parasites in the brain, which is very crazy to think, you know, something this big of a neurological issue is coming from, from potentially seizures. And I don't think that's the only thing, or I'm sorry, from um, parasites. I don't think that's the only thing, but it's something to look into. Uh, one of my best friends has MS and he does a lot of these different things. He's a, going to be a chiropractor as well. And he's seen a lot of results from doing these things. Wow. Yeah. I'm surprised that if there's actual, I guess, studies and things showing that parasites can have such a huge impact. Like I've seen that parasites, depending on how long they've been growing in you and which ones, um, they can cause depression and yeah, arthritis and yeah. I guess immune disorders as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm surprised that it's not really talked about enough, but I guess it's too crazy or. <laughs> yeah, well, it, do, it doesn't make any money, really. It doesn't. Yeah. For those pharmaceutical companies, unfortunately, I hate to go there, but they prefer, prefer to have the money in their pocket as opposed to using something natural like ivermectin, which is plant-based, um, that actually does work for many different things and not just parasites. Yeah, definitely. So you're studying to be a chiropractor now. Yes. <laughs> How much more time do you have to go until you uh, graduate or finish? Two years. Yeah. Wow. And then afterwards, I'll probably take on a few different things. I want to get my functional nutrition license. I already signed up for acupuncture. Um, I'll probably do muscle testing. And I don't think I'll go back to med school. Maybe. But I mean, I think I'm going to leave it at that, at that point. I want to, I don't think I necessarily need to prescribe drugs, but they do come in handy from time to time. I will say that. What kind of like situation would arise where you would need to prescribe drugs? So there's the general things. If somebody breaks their elbow or something like that, chiropractic isn't going to necessarily fix it. Um, But Without my MD that I went to, the alternative medicine doc, I would never have gotten a prescription for ivermectin or um, diflucan, which helped with parasite cleanses. 
Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. that would make sense. <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. So based off of what you've already said, obviously you're very motivated based off of your own experience to help others and to avoid most of, or well, so to heal as much as possible or to aid their symptoms mm -hmm. as much as possible to live like a normal life. Is there any other goal with your training that you have? It's a great question. Uh, to be honest with you, I just want to help people. Um, not even just health, but enjoy their life i guess i'm my past has kind of led me to the point where i was literally expecting to have some sort of severe trauma from either a seizure or my surgery um, there was a percent that i would not have made it out or i would have been paralyzed and i pretty much wrapped my head around it literally <laughs> but um I realize that life is kind of short and I want people to, to realize, I guess that as well as they have a lot more control over themselves when it comes to health, as well as their thoughts and they can change, they can make these changes. They don't need a pill to do it. Yeah, no, that's a great message. Yeah. Cause you, yeah, you do have a lot more control over your life and health. Uh, if you're given the right information, I guess, or if you yeah. can find it. I mean, I would assume this is why you're doing it too, right? Once you start these different diets that work and one diet's not going to work for everybody, but I think everybody needs animal fat and animal protein, but you saw the difference in your life, right? So you wanted to help educate others on, you feel a lot better than you ever could. You thought you could, right? So you just want to explain that to them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was my, yeah, my main motivation was finally feeling great again and then wanting yeah. to see if there was anyone else that could help because okay so my main thing was I couldn't find anyone younger and now I've found so many other younger I guess animal-based and carnivore people who have been able to heal so many things but um like you said finding the information when you're younger to hopefully heal something and to avoid any misery or I guess um worsening of your condition was yeah not easy for me to find so yeah putting it out there to hopefully help younger people and then same thing with your thing to yeah help other people that was a very roundabout and terrible way of putting it but you got the no, idea it made complete sense <laughs> i know what you mean i know it's just the yeah. passion behind it right you just want to explain the full topic but it's hard to do so because of how much how drastic it's been and how much almost it excites you because of what it's done for you i totally yeah. understand yeah, okay, so I have one last question um, sure. that you mentioned earlier, just because probably very scary moment in your life when you basically drowned due to an episode Yeah. swimming. What was that like? What was it like? Well, yeah. from what I remember, and this is my best, all right, let me, from what I remember, right, I, it was around finals, so I was super stressed out. Um, I probably shouldn't have been swimming, but I mean, I wasn't thinking of it, right? We were, I was literally there to swim division one. Um, after finals, it was literally, I think I took the, my last one that day, dove into the pool because we were doing running dives. Um, just everybody was out of the pool. Um, I went in, I went down all the way down. The pool was an Olympic sized pool. So it was, I want to say 20 meters ish to the bottom. So I was on the way down. Um, no idea what was going on. I couldn't, I, I literally couldn't think I couldn't move. And my buddy, my best friend, his name's Sam dove into the pool. I guess he saw me down there and he was like, he thought I was joking around, but after a solid like 30 seconds of me not moving, he realized something was wrong and picked me up and brought me to the top afterwards yeah afterwards they told me i should probably go to the emergency room because of potential brain damage i don't know if there was any but um i can hold my breath pretty long so <laughs> yeah no that just yeah like gave me a billion more questions but i'll try and keep it short um training as a swimmer how would that 
So if you had a neurological disorder and you need to have enough oxygen in your brain to hold your breath, I guess, underwater for a certain amount of time, was that more difficult for you to train for that? Or was that not quite an issue? Uh, I don't think it was. Um, I like to breathe every stroke. I was a freestyle freestyler. I, I swam up to the mile sometimes, distance freestyle. I don't think it really had an effect there, uh, but it does affect my, it did affect my training just in general with all the medications I was on. I was always in a lot of pain, a lot of cramping. Um, I had to go to bed early. I was always tired, always sleeping through classes. It's not an easy feat to take on life with epilepsy, but also when you add in those medications, oh my gosh, it's, it's not easy. And I'm thankful to where I don't have to take as many as I was on, but oh, it was not, it, it's not fun to take on that with different pills in your body. Yeah, I, I would think that would be pretty challenging, especially yeah, if you're not getting enough sleep, uh, in general, especially if your episodes yeah. are on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, is there anything else that you would like to add on or say? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, we didn't really get into the carnivore conversation too much. I don't know if you wanted to talk about that at all or. Sure. Yeah. So I guess, yeah. What is your, <laughs> I don't know why, but I thought you were animal based. So you're carnivore then. So I was carnivore originally. Now I'm animal based now, okay. um, but carnivore was like out of any time in my life, I was the happiest at that point. I was the most energetic. I was just felt like the strongest I had ever been. I was functioning cognitively much better than ever in my life it's just very hard to continue that for several months I was I was on it for almost a year and it was it was great um but you know you see people eating different things and I figured okay well I think it's all right if I have an avocado or something like that when they're they're eating McDonald's <laughs> yeah yeah you're still way better off having just an avocado with your me than yeah mcdonald's or yeah, some other food. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah so so what have you added in to be animal based i guess and yeah why those things mm -hmm. so i've added in coconut different forms of coconut coconut milk coconut cream um as well as just fruit in general um a lot of just i do frozen fruit because it's an easy dessert i do raw honey very similar to what Paul Saladino does, but I don't think I take it to the extreme like he does. I don't eat all the raw organs anymore. I went raw for a little bit, just raw meat. That was interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I had to find what pretty much just worked for my body with the lifestyle that I have with school and just the uh, general, general, so. Yeah, did you notice any differences adding in the fruit and um, I guess honey to the diet or was it kind of staying the same? That's a good question. Honestly, I don't think there was too much of a difference. I think that I wasn't as alert, I guess you could say, but it wasn't something where I was, it was night and day. It was just kind of like, okay, well, I like having a few carbs here and there. I think that it, it helps with, just working out wise, I'm, I wasn't as sore back then. I still get a little bit sore, but it's nice to have like almost like a pre-workout with honey. And then I think that carbohydrates are essential for recovery time. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed, um, when I would just do like strict meat recently, I've tried adding in more fruits and then spices. Um, when it's strict meat, you do feel a bit sore and you get the muscle cramping a lot more. Yeah, yeah. yeah but if you have the carbohydrates, I guess, um, I'm not really sure the science behind it as to why you don't get the cramping. I, th I think it has to do with a lot of so People miss out on that sodium. And it's hard to just put salt on your food yeah. and then just like leave it at that. It really is. Yeah, yeah. Like even the electrolytes isn't always quite enough and you're like, dumping in to get enough but it's still yeah. not enough. yeah exactly yeah so do you take so you're still taking the like general supplements that you said um but do you take mm -hmm. anything else or is that kind of 
No, just the general supplements, honestly. And like I said, I work with my muscle tester to kind of figure out what I'm dealing with at, at that point. If I'm more stressed, I'm going to add in different things because of finals. Um, if I've got back pain, like I'll figure out what I need for that. Or if one organ's just kind of not doing well, for instance, my liver, then I'm going to do some more detoxes. Um, but it really just, it differs. Um, I try to take fish oil always just because it's so vital, but there's nothing that I don't kind of take. And then I stop. I think it's important to do that. If you don't do that, then I think it gets, it's hard to tell if it's even working, I guess, yeah. from what I've, what I've felt. Right. Yeah. So then that just, yeah, brought up another question. So when you did carnivore originally, was that like strict beef, salt, water, or did you have a lot of different animal foods or what was that like? Yeah, I started just beef and then water and salt. And when my doctor told me to do that, I thought it was crazy, but yeah, it was just strict and then slowly started to add a few things in that initial starting point. I did feel better, but I was, it was very weird, right? You've got that initial, like, it almost took me two months to feel okay with digestion after starting. But then after that, I felt incredible. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess that would be digestion as in just the transitional period or just feeling comfortable with it digestion stool like the frequency I was going to the bathroom um, a lot of people have issues with liquid stools when they start the carnivore diet yeah for me it was the same exact thing right yeah and so now do you prioritize like red meats or do you just have like a whole range of everything I prioritize red meat just because of you know with I don't I don't have any pork but I'll have chicken from time to time but that the way they can detox versus a cow is not as good. So you're going to be getting some of those seed oils and, and different toxins, as opposed to if you just eat meat or just eat red meat, you're going to probably feel a little bit better. Right. Yeah. And do you worry a lot about the sourcing of everything that you consume or is that not quite as much of an issue? I do. I do for the fruit a lot of the times because there's some interesting studies with glyphosate yeah. um, I try to do organic but that is expensive and I try to do grass-fed but everybody's on a budget yeah oh yeah I would think the meat wouldn't quite be as much of an issue as long as it's red meat and it's a ruminant animal so then you can yeah. get away more with that but the fruits and if you would eat vegetables would be a bit more of a concern yeah uh, Zach, Zach Bush, Dr. Zach Bush has some interesting philosophies behind the whole pesticide and everything like that. And people argue it doesn't matter if they're organic or not. But if you listen to him, he talks about how the third generation of rats or, or mice or rodents who have been exposed to glyphosate, how eventually on that third generation, that's when things start to, to pop up with different autoimmune problems and just different diseases that they start to develop. And if you look at kids nowadays, one in every two kids have an autoimmune issue in school. You know, everybody's got inhalers, uh, peanut allergies, and now the list is going longer and longer. I'm sure that you realized in school you had maybe one or two people uh, with a peanut allergy, but, but it's getting a lot worse. So Glyphosate isn't in regular and other pesticides is not something to take lightly. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. The amount of autoimmune disorders and just, I guess, allergies in general have just skyrocketed because you look back even like 20 years ago and it wasn't quite a huge thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but now most kids and even, I guess, so-called healthier people that eat kind of, let's say like a paleo diet because they were exposed as kids to yeah. say and all sorts of other processed foods their kids then have problems which is very sad because yeah, very have, sad. yeah you have just a baby but it's either going to be a vegetable or it has some disorder autoimmune condition whatever it may be yeah yeah I, it's going to be interesting in the next few years what happens with both those chemicals as well as what people have been pushing us to put into our body um 
Yeah. So we'll find out. Unfortunately. Yeah, I've already personally, I know a couple people personally, as well as I know of some people who know people who have already had a lot of issues with that mm -hmm. specifically. And it's very sad to see because it's quite a majority of the population that are affected. Yeah, it's, I don't want to go too far into it, but yeah, I've done quite a bit of research on it and I've had some people close to me have issues and it's clearly aligned, but they, but people just don't want to see it that way, which is fine. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. unfortunate. It is. It is. Yeah. I don't want to get too controversial here. <laughs> no, you probably shouldn't. Yeah. Let's wait yeah. until I'm licensed and, <laughs> you know, so yeah. I can't take that away from me. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you want to add about diet, I guess, animal-based and or carnivore? Hmm. Give me one second. I want to think about that because I don't know. I want to make sure I say everything because I don't really talk about it too much. I think that I actually do want to mention this, if this is okay. I think that different diets work for different people. It's not necessarily the fact that animal based or carnivore is the best thing to do but i truly believe that in this time period the soil has been so stripped of its natural nutrients over the time of monocropping and different things like that um, and people argue you know a vegan diet is the way to go maybe for um you know animals protecting animals not eating animals i totally understand that but they have to be very mindful if they're going to go that route, that they're supplementing with proper things, especially B12. People get so, so wrapped up in which is better for the body. Just realize that the soil that we're living on now and we're producing these foods, if they're fruits and vegetables, they're about 50% of what they used to be in the 1990s, in the 1980s, I believe it was specifically. So whatever you decide to do, just be mindful. And I truly believe that animal protein is vital because of that. Not necessarily back then it would have been, but nowadays if you're not taking care of your body, getting these things tested, your vitamin levels. Um, if you're vegan or you don't prefer to eat animal protein, just be very, very mindful because not only does it affect you, it also has the potential to affect your children. Yeah. And I'm not trying to start anything when I say that, um, but, you know, I get people have autonomy. Just be very careful of what one you take. If it's carnivore, do your research there. If it's veganism, just do your research there. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And also, I'm not really sure what the study was, but crops are genetically modified now for the most part from what their original, I guess, what they used to be a hundred years ago, even. So yes. I guess farmers modify them so that they produce more. So then it's completely different. So then even that isn't quite as, let's say, healthy as what it could have been. Also, the preparing of the food is a huge thing. Some people would just eat everything raw. And there's certain foods that you just can't eat raw. You have to prepare it properly. So yeah. that huge thing, yeah. Yeah, major, major, yeah. Um, when I went to Costa Rica, things just, you eat it and it doesn't have such a crazy effect on your body. You don't necessarily need to eat as much because it's more filling. And I just felt like I could function a lot better down there. When I came back, I had that, first few days of where I just felt kind of crappy the foods I was eating again it's a lot cleaner down there um, but that's just you know it's just what it is nowadays it's much easier to get cleaner things down there versus places like here that are very populated yeah yeah well populated and I guess in Costa Rica they don't produce as much uh, like crops so then maybe they don't have as much of the pesticides that could potentially blow over and disrupt the more natural ones. Yeah. Yep. It's a difficult, it's a difficult subject, I guess. Yeah. 
complex i should say complex yeah yeah do you have anything else that you want to add in and just general to sum it all up no i don't think so i think i've talked enough i've talked quite a bit so i don't want to <laughs> bore you i'm sure people are like wow this stuff's pretty boring if they watch and they i get into my different spiels about chiropractic it's not the most interesting but i don't know i find it interesting i like all of it yeah but that's the whole point is if you want to find info, you have to listen to the so-called boring stuff. I personally yeah. don't find it boring, but yeah. <laughs> okay, then well, thank you very much for coming on. One last question. So where can people find you? Oh, uh, well, yeah, I'm on Instagram right now, Spencer underscore Treader. Um, I post a little bit of like workout stuff and the occasional nutrition information. But if anybody wants to, find me there you're welcome to set up a call i do some coaching um, whatever you need whether it be spiritual health related um workout related i'm i'm happy to help in any way okay great well so people can go and find you there i'll obviously put it down below as well but yeah thank you for having me this was i really enjoyed our conversation and um i hope to you know i know we'll stay in touch but I look forward to seeing how this develops for you and I wish you the best and everybody who watched, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this very um, informative, if anything, as well as if you, like I mentioned earlier, want to work with Spencer, you can, you can message him as well as if you want to work with me, you can. If you also have a carnivore, animal-based or keto um, success story, feel free to message me if you'd like to share that as I find it personally very inspiring for myself as well as I feel the need to kind of push it out to hopefully inspire others and also just to get more information out there so that people looking for something to help with their situation can find that information um, as I would have loved to have a lot more of these out there when I was looking for information. So yeah, if you want to share your success story, feel free to message me and we can set that up. Um, and until then, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed.